In this election, why did Gen Z turn right to the extent that they did? Or more specifically, why did Gen Z men turn right? Because it largely looks like Gen Z women are shaping up to be the most progressive cohort uh, literally ever seen in America. Well, there does seem to be some clear explanations. There are the symptoms uh, of, of their frustrations. I think that a lot of people are like giving causal weight to. Like they were all convinced by Joe Rogan or something like that. But that just really begs the question, why did they find that sort of media so appealing? Well, if you ask them what their issues are, they talk openly about it. It's not a mystery to them what's driving their political behavior, and much of it is financial. And so we have this interesting survey from a financial services company. They talked to 2,200 Americans, and the Gen Z respondents said, they would need to make, in their view, nearly $600,000 a year to be financially successful, $587,000. Now, that is probably more than you would say you need to make to feel financially secure. It's in fact about three to six times what any other age group says. And if that tells us anything, it tells us they're really worried about the future. And so in their mind, the only thing that would bring financial security stability is wealth beyond what most of us could ever imagine having. Now, that's not the only reason they think that number should be so high, but it's a big one. They've grown up in times of uncertainty, uh, you know, the Great Recession, and then obviously everything coming out of the pandemic. And that is driving so much of what they think about the future and what they think about politics. And so one of the heads of, of uh, Empower that did this uh, survey said, many people feel they're coming up short with half believing they're less financially successful compared to others around them. The majority think prosperity is harder to achieve of their generation, which factors into the magical number of people attached to success. And they, they admit it's also, they follow a lot of influencers. The influencers are constantly flaunting wealth, whether they have it or not. It's this myth that everyone is doing so well. You see it constantly in social media. So there's multiple things that are influencing this. But I think fundamentally, this is the big thing. It is fear about the future. And once you have that fear, once that's true for so many people, you can attach all sorts of cultural baggage to it. And so the fear that they have that they might never be off well off financially, you can have the manosphere trying to make them feel you know emasculated as a result of that. Like that's the flavor you should put to your economic uncertainty is I'm never going to be able to you know provide for a family or whatever. But that wouldn't actually be persuasive if the fear itself wasn't there. And so we have some more numbers. We're going to jump to that. But yeah, as I'm curious what you make of uh, what this survey revealed. The answers are out there. The answers that people are looking for, it isn't a mystery as to why a lot of these people are voting the way that they're voting and the way that they are uh, they tend to be leaning politically and socially. Uh, I have been talking a lot about the 4B movement over on Rebel HQ, which if you're not familiar, it's where women are abstaining from choosing to abstain from dating, sex, marriage, and having children with the conservative men in their lives or men who otherwise don't respect or appreciate or support them. And it's not even like a thing that they're doing consciously necessarily. It's not as like there's a name for it, but it's not this big movement, at least the way it's manifesting here in the U.S., uh, where women are saying, I'm not going to do this anymore until this or this or this happens, right? It's not quite as defined as like the less Estrada situation, but it's happening kind of organically, right? They're saying, you know what, this is the world and this is how I'm choosing to exist within it. So that's what the women are doing because they're feeling a little bit helpless because their rights are being eroded. They have little hope for the future and they see all these men in their lives who are not helping them and not supporting them. So they're saying, you know what? I don't need your help. I'm just going to live my life without you and figure it out along the way. To a certain extent, that sounds like a very similar to what the guys are doing, right? They're also trying to navigate a lot of uncertainty going forward. And this is how they, they've Bound. This is the way that they've been given really to do that, right? They get a lot of their information from, from YouTube, from podcasts, from, from, you know, Discord and Twitch streams, whatever. I don't, I don't know what the kids are into these days. <laughs> Some but, of you those. know, yeah. So, but they get a lot of information from these people who they think they admire, who they think they respect, but they don't actually know these people, right? So, I think overall, maybe this is like a ride that we're a wave that we're going to have to ride for a little bit but overall what i would like to see is maybe a little less emphasis being placed on influencers and celebrity culture and just like 
the idolatry of it all, because I think people really just need to start thinking for themselves again and finding a way forward. And that's not to dismiss their fears, because there there's a lot to be afraid of. There's a lot of uncertainty, especially with AI coming for all of our jobs or, you know, whatever. Uh, but I, I think that this is a, an interesting response to all of that, for sure. Yeah, 100%. Well, we're going to continue, you know, trying to learn what we can coming out of the election. But I think that this is one of the important lessons the Democrats should take.